let's take a look at an important definition. We're going to say that an automorphism is an isomorphism from a group G onto itself. If you actually look back at the first video I did this week, 6.1, the very first example that I did of an isomorphism was in fact an automorphism. We took a function from a group onto itself and showed that that, isomor that function was an isomorphism. Let's take a look at another one here. Let's say I've got C going from Z8 under addition mod 8 to has to be itself, of course. And that function is going to be D of X equals 3X mod 8. So to show that this is an automorphism, we need to show that function is 1 to 1 onto and has the homomorphism property. Now, there are ways to show that this is 1 to 1 and onto using kind of the tricks we've shown in other videos this week. But honestly, if there's only eight elements, it's probably just as easy to just go through and figure out what each one is. So 0 obviously maps to 0, 1 maps to 3, 2 maps to 6, 3 maps to 9, which mod 8 would be 1, 4 maps to 12, mod 8 is 4, 5 maps to 15, which would be 7, 6 maps to 18, mod 8 is 2, 7 maps to 21, mod 8 is 5. So it's easy to see no two things get to map to the same thing. Every single element of Z8 is there, therefore it's both one to one and on two. The homomorphism property, very similar to almost everything we've done this week. So if I have D of XY, that's equal to three times x. I'm actually going to write it plus y because remember that my group operation is addition. So that's going to be the same thing as 3x plus 3y, which is d of x plus d of y. Now, of course, all these additions and multiplications are all mod 8, but that doesn't change anything that I just did. So there we go, that is an automorphism. Now, it's worth noting that if I had tried something like phi of x equals 2x mod 8, that is not an automorphism. And it's easy to see that because that's not going to be 1 to 1. Phi of 0 is 0, but phi of 4 would also be 0. It can't be 1 to 1. Okay, now what's interesting about these automorphisms is that if you look at a group and you look at all possible automorphisms on that group, it is in fact a group. I'm kind of skipping forward ahead here. The set of automorphisms of a group is a group under the operation of function composition. There's a particular kind of automorphism here called the inner automorphism induced by an element. Doesn't matter what your group is, if you define a function by taking that group element times x times the inverse of that group element, that's a particular kind of automorphism called the inner automorphism. And if we look at the set of all of those automorphisms, that's also a group. Now, it's worth noting that if you have an abelian group, the only inner automorphism is the identity. Because if you've got an abelian group and you do x, a, x inverse, you can flip the x and the a inverse. You've got a times a inverse. So you get the 
e times x. Therefore, everything's mapping to itself. You're only getting the identity thing. Now, I'm not going to prove that the set of automorphisms and the set of inner automorphisms of the group are in fact groups, because that's going to be on your assignment. 